Okay, find the width of AB. So we must understand the net means you can just like um, curl it up and then it will directly, you know, match the whole thing. <laughs> so the trick is to realize mm -hmm, AB is down here. Okay, the AB is here. It's the bottom circumference of a circle. So let's put it like that. Circumference of a circle at the bottom. Okay, how do we figure out the circumference of a circle at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Okay, we know the formula for a circumference of a circle is, let's say two pi r or pi d. Can I just take this as the diameter and do it? Is that what they're asking? No, see, this is, a, this is the trick in this question. Okay, so that is why I'm going to add a line like this. Uh, this is why it makes a difference. So when I put a line like that, it's a curved line. The circumference part, if you look at it carefully, mm -hmm, it's talking about like this right there. It's like a bit on the freehand here. Ta da! This is the circumference, this curved AB. But the line AB, this is different. Huh? The line AB is talking about the straight line. Uh, AB, when without the curved line on top of it, is talking about the straight line AB. So they're asking about this one. So this is what they ask you to find. But in the picture, it's quite obvious that we can play around with the, the other one. That means, okay, all right. So how do we figure that out, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's think and see how to figure this thing out. Huh? Okay, so this diameter here, we have the bottom here. This is the diameter of the circle. Huh? Just imagine there's a circle there like that, in the bottom there. Then you have this A and B and extremities. Let's put it like this, huh? A, B, yeah? And then this is 30. Ta -da! 30 like that. And therefore, because that is 30, so I can calculate this thing like this. <laughs> okay, no worries. Let's think and see. So I'm going to go for the AB uh, with, a, with a curve hat on it. So this is circumference of a circle. We can also use pi D because it's quite readily seen that this is D. And therefore, it is 30 pi because the D is 30. Okay, so far, so good. Uh -huh. You also can press B, huh? <laughs> if anything this type or what, you know, just tell me things and then I can check as we go along. Okay, so we found the curve length is 30 uh, pi. So how can we even use that to find the width of AB? Mm -hmm. Actually, that's it right, huh? Is, it, is that what it is? Or is, are they asking for something more specific there, which is the straight line? Is it possible even to calculate the straight line? Or is the dotted line just, uh, what do we say? Just to indicate that it's a curve, it's a curvature there. That's what thinking whether that's it or is it? Maybe I'm thinking and see. Technically, they don't allow this one, it's a little bit uh, interesting. Okay, let's say we try to find the straight line. Huh? Let's imagine the answer to find the straight line. Aha, so how do we go about it when you curve this thing up? Mm -hmm. So the, um, what do we say? Okay, let's mark some things on the picture because they seem to have given a lot of values there, which is not so obvious when we look at it like that. Like for example, this is the um, A to D, this is the C, yeah? this is the points there. Yeah? So if we stretch it out, regardless, this is going to be 30, this distance, and this is also 30. So it brings up all these points here, like this 30, this 30, like that. Huh? And then at the top there, this one also we can find the, uh, what we say? The, the, the diameter like that, mm -hmm. and I can get the curve line like this. So if you want to do that part, let's say the DC, it will be also pi D, or pi of 20, this is 20 pi. So that's how we get that, this curve line there. So I'm just going to mark the curve line like that and write 20 pi, the red one as, what is that, sorry, 30 pi. Okay, so all this we know. Can we somehow use that to calculate this thing? Is there, a, is there a thing here first? I'm, I'm still wondering also, is it possible? Because see, how do we feel that? I'm actually a bit, a bit reluctant on that part. Because when we calculate that, it's a straight line, right? So it, it depends on how we fold it. No matter how we fold it, it could be different, right? You understand what I'm trying to say? The AB, the straight line can change. So how do I know that? Let's do a projection. A projection means uh, where I imagine this goes on like that. With a, sketchy handwriting, but please take note. It will meet at a point O. These two lines are not parallel. So if it meets at a point O, we have a sector. 
Hmm, maybe 10, huh? Let me think and see, it's possible. So let's say this one. So that's why we experiment a bit. Hmm, it's getting a bit more interesting, isn't it? So let's call this angle. Let angle AOB is equals to theta. Now that's a theta, huh? It's like an egg with a, a bit of a line in the middle like that. Okay. So that is how a theta looks like. Okay, now being this set, uh, being that set now, anybody got any ideas how to proceed from here? Aha, uh -huh. so all those at match formulas about, uh, what is the word? About the arc of a circle should come into the mind. All the radian formula and all that. So before I continue, have you all ever wondered why is there first, an, uh, what do you say? An arc, of arc, arc formula? Uh, why is there an arc formula? Uh, that means like, sorry, in terms of radians and all that. Why not just use the degree? Uh, that's another thing. The story is a long story, but to cut it short, it's because mathematically degree does not, uh, the measure in degree does not agree with uh, the more advanced math. That means like when you write in terms of X, it's a thing called power series, for example. So it must be in radians before it can be drawn on the same axis with other curves or considerations. Huh? Okay, now all that being said, trying to put it in simplest terms as possible, now let's talk about this part. So it's going to be a radius, let's say R and R. So it's pretty obvious that R plus 30 is the radius of the entire sector. If we call that one as the smallest sector with 20 pi. Is there a way to calculate? So the only way to determine whether they're asking this or whether we completed by finding it 30 pi, I'm not sure actually. So I'm going to use the admits formula of S equals to R theta. S is the curve or arc length and theta is in radians. Okay, please take note. When we use this formula, it's in radians. So it's this R theta, let's change it to a capital. So it's a bit different from the others to see it as a formula. Let's say I look at the small circle uh, with the arc or sector, let's use the correct word. So the sector, O, what is that? Huh? Sorry, OCD. So we talk about the sector OCD. I'm just experimenting, yeah? Okay, so just to show some things. Like, so let's say we're doing like this. So sector OCD, we get the S is 20, 20 pi. This is how the 20 pi relates. Aha. Uh -huh. So 20 pi is the, uh, is the curve like that, 20 pi here, r theta. So it's a small r there and the theta. So if we look at the sector OAB, uh -huh. so sector OAB, it has 30 pi as its s, and then the radius is now r plus 30, isn't it? And then the same theta is there. Mm -hmm. Okay, same theta, same angle. All right, okay, not so bad. So what do we do? It's quite natural to divide these two equations. So when we divide these two equations, because we're taking a ratio, that's why I keep it in terms of pi first. For accuracy, pi is a constant, so it's the best thing to do. So we have r theta over r plus 30. Sorry, that's a bit of a horrible handwriting there. Looks like an n really. r plus 30 with a theta like that. Aha. So now let's take a bit of a cut cut and see what happens. So theta, theta cut, pi and pi cut, zero and zero cut. Hmm, looks like I actually find the value of R. All right, this looks nice. Okay, let's try plus. So this is two over three equals to R over R plus 30. So cross multiply, two R plus 60 equals to, sorry, three R. Oh, then you bring it the other side, 60 equals to R. So we can actually figure out, even though it seemed like possible, that this r is 60. Okay, the value of r now is 60. So we update the original picture. Let me take a screen grab from time to time of the solution. You know why? Because sometimes the connection can be a little bit easy. It has happened before, or not really a connection, or electrical surge or something that it can cut off. So we can continue back now from where we left off. Huh? Reconnect this. That should be okay. <laughs> Just mentioning that. Okay, now the r is 60. Okay, my bad. R is 60 and this thing, this thing. Mm -hmm. And I know the th theta. Uh, can I find the theta based on this? Yes. So it brings us to the next point here. So it's a little bit harder, as you can see. At first, it looked impossible. Do you notice that? That's the challenge questions. Because uh, uh, every question has its own challenge. Lah. So let's take a bit of time on it, please. So from here, let me do one more thing here before I go to the white screen there. Because these things are all written here. Um, so it's a bit harder type, huh? please take note, not the usual type. So yeah, we pull this off. Let's say 20 pi equals to R theta. So I substitute the value of R, which is the red color here, 
So I substitute here, turns out to be six to eight. And then this is theta. Okay, that means theta, when you divide it, you realize that it becomes 20 over 60, or well, that reduces to pi over three. But we know it's radians, huh? please remember the nature of the formula tells me that. Pi over three radians is how many degrees? Then when you change it to degrees, means you need to times by 180, because pi radians, uh, sorry, I need to, uh, sorry, pi radians, 180 or pi. Pi radians, 180. <laughs> We have a tongue twister there. Okay, let's change the color and write this. So when you cut, cut, you get 60 degrees. Pi is 180 degrees, so pi over 3 is 60 degrees. So now we realize we also can actually just found the angle. All right, there's an angle as well there. Okay, so what can we do with all this? Then I draw next another interesting picture, hopefully. Then we pull this off like this. Okay, let me just draw it here. Huh? So a little space you can compare like that. Let's take note. Da -da -da -da. Okay, there we are. And then we continue on that, perseverance. So this is all, all these are straight lines. Please take note, just an extension. So the geometry looks a little bit harder than usual because this had a bit of these construction techniques where we um, make it to meet at a point and all that. So the theta, we just found the last value there, which is 60 degrees. Now I'm using degrees because I'm not gonna use circle formulas. So it's not quite necessary. Uh, that means I, I'm gonna look at it as a triangle. Because remember in the end, we wanted to find the width AB. So the width is actually a straight line. Now only we're talking about it in more detail. Okay, so that is that. So this part, you'll notice that this is 60 plus 30 like this now, right? Which is 90, this distance, huh? Because 60 and 30 on the picture. So this market is a go along. 60 here and 30 here. So the overall straight line, huh? please imagine. Uh, remember that the construction made it just an extension in, in that line. So here also 90. Uh, 90, 90, 60 in the middle. Aha, the AB we need to find. The magic number. What is the magic number for this AB? So I'm just going to change it to gold now, just with this double layer on it. So we can see that we're going to find this. And now we need another Edmonds formula. So it's quite a tough question because linking a few topics in one go, I think. But it's a good practice. Okay, so it's obviously the cosine rule, the glorious cosine rule. So now I'm going to write the cosine rule first before I use the formula. So in this terms, it'll be like AB squared. What you do is, it's something like the generalization of the Pythagoras theorem. So the other two is just sum of squares like Pythagoras theorem, OA, OB, minus the two OA and OB. Oh, and then cos of that, sorry, no space there. So cos of that angle in the center, like opposite the AB, AOB in this case, it will always be opposite the angle. Why I do it very verbally, some formulas like this, you can remember it verbally. So it becomes easier. When you're right, don't really need to remember a lot of details. Okay, now we just substitute the values. Huh? Please take note. Of course, it's an isosceles triangle. Some of you may say, oh yeah, yeah I noticed that 1990 isosceles Why? We can take midpoint and take the 30, uh, take a sign, can. That's an alternate solution. Okay, so the two solutions you can do from here. So I just write this one because we already want to uh, do the cosine rule already. And then the cos here is just cos of 60. So at this juncture, we just put all this in a calculator. Cos 60 is half one, by the way. So 90 square plus 90 square. Let me just do it like this. Minus, uh, please double check my calculations. Um, not always on par with the calculations. Cos 60 is 0 0.5, just in case. Lah, huh? So you get 8100. And from which we can easily deduce that AB is the square root of that. Normally you get nice numbers. What are the chances of a nice number doing answer right? So it should be correct, I think. Hopefully, you got okay. 90. So this is 90. Oh, what was I saying about this alternate solution? So alternately, if you have noticed that this could have been like this, but let's move some things before I write the wait on the side there like that. Aha. So if you would have drawn a dotted line like that in the middle, then going around like this, this is 90. This is A B. Please take note by symmetry of isosceles triangle this is 1990. Oh, that means this is 30. Lah. That's the focus. Ah, that means it's half of that symmetry. So 30 degrees. And then this is just a midpoint. So let's call it the letter M like that. So we want to figure this out. BM. So I just use a simple trigo now. So I use opposite. I want to find. So sine of 30 degrees is opposite BM over hypotenuse 90. So we can easily see now BM is 
90 sine 30. Okay, I think you all either can use calculator. If you know it's a special value, you realize that BM will be 90 and a half times half or 45. But that's not an issue because BM is, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Put it equal sign. <laughs> it's 45 right, in length. But we want this length of AB because this is a midpoint. Whenever it's an isosceles triangle, we have this midpoint trick. So AB turns out to be 2BM. Mm -hmm. So that means this is 2 times 45. What I just read it in the earlier line. Earlier line, yes, but I just want to make it a bit more natural. Okay. And then we get this is 90 as well. So this would be the width of AB.